Hey guys, what's up? Simmer11 here with my review of Dragon Ball Super Episode 41. Come forth, God of Dragons, and grant my wish. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This is a pretty straightforward episode that gave hints as to what's to come in the future of the show. So the episode started off with the king of everything, Zeno, and Beerus and Champa are freaking out over him. Even the Kais are freaking out, except Supreme Kai because he doesn't know who Zeno is. And it was funny when the old Kai slapped him over asking like, oh, who is this guy? Who is this child? And Beerus informs Vegeta and Piccolo that Zeno stands at the top of all of the 12 universes. And then they start freaking out as well. And I'd love to learn more about the hierarchy of Dragon Ball because we have the Kais, the gods, their attendants who appear to be stronger, and the king of everything. Hopefully that's as high as Toriyama will go with it. We don't need a set of gods above the gods or a different set of gods that do different things. I think this is enough and if we had more stuff like that, it would get too cluttered. He has plenty of room to expand Dragon Ball as much as he wants with this material that he's introduced. So, yeah. I mean, seriously, look at Dragon Ball as a whole. That's like 300 episodes of just one universe. So we have enough content. Whis is worried about them looking down on Zeno since they're on a platform higher than him. And is it really that serious? Like, they, they come down to Zeno. Really, the gods, their attendants, and the Kais rush down to bow in front of Zeno. And I didn't expect the Omni King's voice. He is literally a child. I don't know what kind of voice I was expecting, but not this one. Maybe an adult's voice, but a child's voice? I think Toriyama's always done this. He's always made his strong characters weird in a way. I mean, Boo, Frieza, Cell, they all look a little weird, so I guess it makes sense with what he does with this series. So, Zeno came to the tournament because someone brought it to his attention that Beerus and Champa were doing something arbitrary, and I wonder who told him. I guess that's not important, though, but still, I was kind of curious, like, who brought it to his attention? Were they just watching? Do they have to watch the entire, entire universe? Maybe it was one of his attendants or something. We and Bado start talking about the bad things that Beerus and Champa have done. Beerus eats and sleeps and kind of neglects his role. Um, Champa isn't eating healthy foods, therefore he's gained weight and all that. And the Omni King seems kind of passive. He just said yeah to a lot of things that were said to him in this episode. And he even jokes about getting new gods of destruction, or new gods of destruction, which causes Beerus and Champa to freak out again. And Zeno has been watching the tournament and he said that he enjoyed it a lot. And this was my favorite part of the episode because he announces that they will do a tournament with contestants from every universe. That would be a good way for Toriyama to introduce the other universes without having them to go, without having the characters go to every universe. Because when I heard about like 12 universes and stuff, I'm like, Dragon Ball Super or Dragon Ball is going to be going on for a long time. And I don't even know if they're going to cover all this content. And it would be weird to introduce this content but not cover it. You know, I think that's a weird storytelling thing. You should you should talk about or you should like do something all this all these universes that you have introduced. So we are getting something, we're getting a tournament, and that'll be good enough for me. Goku is all for this idea and he approaches the Omni King but his attendants kind of stop him and get in the way and the Omni King walks up to Goku and he compliments him so Goku reaches his hand out for a handshake and Beerus and Champa are losing it at this point and Zeno he thinks about it for a pretty long time and eventually he shakes Goku's hand but when they shake hands Goku is able to pick him up with ease and I hope this isn't another troll character situation like I hope the Omni King is actually strong I hope he's not I hope like the strongest guy in the universe is not the the weakest one or something like that I hope he's actually strong I mean Beerus and Champa are afraid of him so I think that means something so Zeno leaves and then Champa agrees to give Beerus the Super Dragon Balls but he says they won't find the last one and Champa even tells his team to come to the next tournament or the Omni King will get angry and it was weird because Champa leaves with Vados and he kind of just leaves his team there and I'm just like didn't you bring them there <laughs> they didn't show them all leaving together but it seemed like he was leaving with Vados so I was like what, what's going on don't you have to take them with you because I'm pretty sure most of them can't travel there on their own. And I can understand seeing um, 
Oh, did I talk about that? Champa, he wants his team to come to the, the next tournament. Well, Omni King will get angry. I think I said that. I can understand seeing Kabe and Hit again, but the rest didn't really seem that important to me. If they do do another tournament, I guess Frost could have the golden form and actually perfect it because Frieza had the golden form, but he didn't train in it that long, so we have that. So we, we may be able to look forward to Frost actually having the golden form and actually being able to use it well. Kabe wants to guide Vegeta through his planet, and he keeps calling him mentor, but Vegeta doesn't like that, and I like that joke, I like um, that Kabe, even after all this, he still looks up to Vegeta as like his mentor, and Goku literally asked Hit to fight in three days, and Hit says nothing, and then Goku asks him about tomorrow, and then Hit just walks away. <laughs> oh man, I, I would think that Hit would talk to Goku after like what they've been through, they seem like they're kind of connected, they seem like they're kind of friends, but nope, he didn't say anything to Goku. Boo finally woke up, and then we get the greatest moment in Dragon Ball history. Hercule calls Monaka very strong and wants him to be the image of his gem. I love this. Monaka is literally the Hercule of Universe 7. And we finally get some clarity with the whole situation of Beerus being evil or not. He's not evil, and that's kind of why I shouldn't be looking too hard into Dragon Ball and coming up with all these theories. Because some things are just added. They seem like they're just added into Dragon Ball for fun, just to like mix it up a little bit, just to keep you on your toes, but it's not really that important. Um, Bulma asks him about it, and Beerus says that he can't promise anything, and she says, oh, I'm going to tell the Omni King and all that. So they can't find the final Dragon Ball, but Seventeen says that they're all there. I don't know how Bulma didn't notice that on the map. Like, if you're looking at a map, you should be like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You should see seven. I don't know about that. And Monaka, he works with maps a lot with his job, and he says that you have to look at it from a 3D point of view. So everyone gets in the cube except Whis, who's on top of the cube, and they look at the Dragon Balls. And Whis literally destroys the Nameless Planet by creating tornadoes and destroying the ground. And surprise, surprise, the planet is the Dragon Ball. And it's like that because of, I don't know, like colliding into things into space and I guess they got covered eventually and it's like oh this is a planet no no it's the dragon ball the dragon part of this episode where they summon the dragon and everything it was too long in my opinion it was too long because they didn't really do anything um after a while it's just like watching the dragon kind of transform wake up or whatever it was doing it just went on for too long so Bulma tells Beerus what he needs to say to summon the dragon in the language of the gods and it's the title of the episode Come forth, God of Dragons, and grant my wish. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So we get this long sequence of summoning the dragon. And the one thing that's relevant from this whole situation is that they're inside of the dragon's core. The core of his presence, or his nucleus, that's how they described it. And it kind of looked like he ate them during that long summoning sequence. And Super Shinron, as they call him, or Piccolo called him, is massive in size. I've... I don't know if I watched the spoiler video, I saw like the title of the spoiler video, and that's not the dragon's name that people got from the spoilers, but Piccolo called it Super Shinron, so I don't know. Maybe that's what it means in Japanese. <laughs> or like if you translate it over to English, maybe it means Super Shinron, but I don't know. So, the dragon, yeah, he's massive in size. He's almost too big because, oh man, the dragon's just going through all these planets. I think he ate a planet. It's huge. So Beerus makes his wish, and Bulma asks him what was the wish, and he said it was a bed. I think he wished for a softer bed. And even I was a little upset over this because we spent a whole tournament, I don't know how long this tournament was, but like at least like 20 episodes or a little bit under 20 episodes, and we spent this whole tournament for you to just ask for a freaking bed. You, you wasted the wish. Also, why does the God of Dragons only grant one wish? It must be a pain to gather... Or it must be a pain to gather all of the Super Dragon Balls, and then you only get one wish. That's kind of unfair. So then we shift over to Champa and Vados, and we, will, we learn that Beerus actually wished for Champa's Earth to be restored. Now, that's a better wish, and I like this a lot more, and Beerus is pretty kind for that, and I like that he helped out his brother. So, the dropping everyone off, Beerus and Monaka get dropped off first at Beerus' planet, and I'm guessing Monaka is some sort of delivery man. Beerus gives him a lot of gold, and he says that he will continue to use Monaka as motivation for Goku. I don't know if it's important, but he didn't mention Vegeta. Plus, that joke is staying around with Monaka being, like, useless and stuff, and, I mean, the Hercule joke is still there, too, so I'm guessing that's going to be in the joke in the series forever. I, I'm not really a big fan of that continuing, but I don't really care. 
So the gang is on their way home, and that's the end of the episode. I liked this episode. It was pretty chilled out. I really liked hearing about the tournament with all the different universes. Hopefully that's a long story arc. I don't want them to like skip through fights and everything. I don't know if they'll have to cut down the team to like three members or something because that would be a lot of people. But if they kept it with five, I don't know. They would probably have to rush through some fights or like some characters would actually be useless and not important at all. But we will see. I want the tournament to be in a few years in terms of the story when Goten and Trunks are older and maybe Pan is a little older too. I think the uh, Zeno, the Omni King, I think he mentioned that he wanted it to be in the near future. Hopefully he means a few years and not like in a few months or something. I believe Toriyama said that Super is before the ending of Z, so I think he said it was because Chi Chi and Bulma are old by then, and that is kind of true. A lot of the characters are old by then because they would be like in their 40s, but I think being before the ending of Dragon Ball Z is hindering some of the characters because I'd love to see Trunks, Goten, and Gohan fighting. And I mean, they don't have to be on the level of Goku or Vegeta, but I'd like to, to see them like get stronger and maybe unlock the god powers as well. And I would like to see a little bit of Zeno's power. And really, I, we need to see more from Champa, Beerus, Whis, and Vados. Why are the attendants stronger than the gods, and what exactly are these attendants? There's just too many characters traveling around together, and I know Dragon Ball has a family aspect, but we don't even get to hear most of the characters speak. Like, think about, like, throughout this tournament, we didn't really get to see most of the people talking. We, we saw them a little bit with the bad animation and everything, but the, overall, they're just watching the tournament. And I think this episode was the most we got out of the cast. We got to see a lot of them talking. And I just wish more of them had speaking roles. The animation in this episode was still bad in areas. And I wish they would just listen to the fans and let the older animators do it. The newer people are kind of improving. But the animation is still lacking overall. In the next episode, Goku appears to be fighting some Monaka ripoff. And I'm guessing that's a filler episode. This will be the third filler episode if I'm correct. There was the Hercule episode after Goku finishes his fight with Beerus, a recap episode, and now this episode. But what did you guys think about this tournament as a whole and where do you think Dragon Ball Super is going next? Also, what did you think about this episode? And anyways, that's it for me. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you like my content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook. The links are below. I'm Sir Mo 11 See you next time and peace out.